Welcome to Lesson 2C, Isentropic Adiabatic Duct Flow. In this lesson, we'll simplify the steady adiabatic duct flow equations from the previous lesson for the case of isentropic flow. Then we'll use conservation of mass to help explain some differences between subsonic and supersonic duct flow. Finally, we'll compare subsonic and supersonic nozzles and diffusers. We begin with steady adiabatic duct flow in a variable area duct, such as this expansion. We have properties at 1 and properties at 2, and we also approximate the flow as quasi one-dimensional. So this V1 is the speed across this entire duct. From the previous lesson for steady adiabatic duct flow of this type, variable area, and quasi 1D, our energy equation reduced to H01 equal H02, or H plus V squared over 2, is a constant. And this holds even if the flow is not isentropic. Now let's differentiate this equation. We get dH plus 2V dV over 2 equals 0, since the derivative of the constant is 0, and the 2's cancel out, giving us dH equal negative v dv. I'll call this equation 1. Now let's make a further approximation, namely isentropic. In other words, negligible irreversibilities, like friction. Recall one of our TDS equations was TDS equal dh minus v dp, or in terms of density rather than specific volume, dh minus 1 over rho dp but ds equals 0 when the flow is isentropic. So this gives us dh equal dp over rho, and I'll call that equation 2. If we equate equations 1 and 2, we have negative v dv equal dp over rho, which I'll call equation 3. Now consider conservation of mass. For a duct flow like this, m dot is rho va, and it must be a constant even when the flow is compressible. Mass must be conserved. We differentiate this term by parts, rho v dA plus rho a dV plus v a d rho, and the derivative of the constant is zero, of course. To get this into a nicer form, we divide each term by rho v a. We get dA over a plus dV over v plus d rho over rho equals zero. I'll call that equation 4. Before I continue, let's divide equation 3 by v squared, giving us negative dv over v equal dp over rho v squared. And plugging this into equation 4, we get dA over a minus dp over rho v squared plus d rho over rho equals 0, which we can rearrange as dA over a equal dp over rho, 1 over v squared, minus d rho dp, which I'll call equation 5. Now we get a little tricky. Recall our definition of the speed of sound from a previous lesson. a squared is del p del rho at constant entropy, in other words, isentropic. We can take the reciprocal of these terms and write 1 over a squared equal del rho del p at constant entropy. But since we're talking about an isentropic process, we'll call this d rho dp for our isentropic flow. Sir, is it mathematically proper to take the reciprocal of a derivative like that? Yes, BJ, it is mathematically proper, and I think I'll give this as a homework problem. You'll have to prove that it works. Oh, well, uh, thank you anyway. With this expression for dp over rho, Equation 5 thus becomes dA over A equal dP over rho, 1 over V squared minus 1 over A squared. And putting this V squared outside the parentheses, we get dP over rho V squared, 1 minus V squared over A squared. And everyone should recognize this as Mach number squared. So dA over A is dP over rho V squared, 1 minus M squared. Or, using equation 3 again, which was dp over rho equal negative v dv, we plug in this in place of dp over rho, 
and get dA over A equal negative dV over V, 1 minus Mach number squared. But we'll just rearrange this into a more convenient form, namely dV over V equal 1 over m squared minus 1 dA over A. This will be a very useful equation. I'll call it equation 6. And we note that equation 6 is valid for steady adiabatic isentropic now 1D duct flow of variable area. We haven't even made the ideal gas approximation yet. Finally, we can answer the question posed in an early lesson. Namely, does speed V go up or down in a converging or a diverging duct? We'll use our equation 6 to answer this question, and it turns out that it depends on whether the flow is subsonic or supersonic. Consider subsonic flow first, with Mach number less than 1. Well then, m squared minus 1 is negative, and so equation 6 has a negative number here. So dV over V is a negative number times dA over A. Or you can think of it as dV over V is proportional to negative dA over A. This means that as A goes up, dA is positive. Therefore, dV is negative. In other words, V goes down. Similarly, as A goes down, dA is negative, dV is positive, and V goes up. The first case is that of a diverging duct. And since A goes up, and because of this statement, V2 is less than V1 for subsonic flow, V down as A up. This is what we're used to in our study of incompressible flow, where we know that speed goes down as area goes up in an incompressible flow. Now consider supersonic flow, Mach number greater than 1. Then the term m squared minus 1 is positive. In equation 6 then, the same kind of analysis yields that dV over V is some positive number times dA over A, where dV over V is proportional to dA over A. So considering a diverging duct again, as A goes up, dA is positive, therefore dV is also positive. In other words, V goes up. And the opposite is the case for a converging duct. dV is negative. In other words, V goes down when A goes down. In our example, diverging duct then, when the flow is supersonic, we have opposite behavior from subsonic flow. Namely, V goes up as A goes up when we have supersonic flow. This one is not so intuitive and is opposite of everything we learned in incompressible flow. How can we conserve mass if the speed goes up as A goes up? Well, the key is that the density has to go down fast enough to overcome the fact that V goes up. For converging ducts, everything is opposite. Namely, for M less than 1 subsonic, V goes up as A goes down, which agrees with our intuition when the flow is subsonic. But when Mach number is greater than 1, V goes down as A goes down. This is the case for supersonic flow and is opposite to what we're used to. As I said in the first lesson, you have to take off your incompressible flow hat and put on your compressible flow hat to understand why this is happening. Here's a quick summary of all the equations we used in this lesson, 1 through 6. And this equation is the key to understanding the relationship between speed and area. Because when m is less than 1, this is negative. But when m is greater than 1, this is positive. I summarize with a figure that comes from my textbook, noting that we use ma instead of m in the textbook. We're talking about subsonic flow in the first row and supersonic flow in the second row here. A subsonic nozzle is one that increases the flow speed. V increases as area decreases. When the duct is diverging, we call that a diffuser. V decreases. Notice that pressure decreases as V increases and vice versa. For the supersonic case, if we still define a nozzle as causing V to increase, the supersonic nozzle is actually a diverging duct, V increasing and P decreasing. 
and a converging nozzle is a supersonic diffuser with V decreasing and P increasing. These are what we're used to, and these are strange the first time you study compressible flow. Finally, I compare actual subsonic and supersonic nozzles. If you have a water nozzle, like at the end of your garden hose to wash your car, it's a converging section of duct, and the speed increases to make a high-speed jet. Speed goes up. In the supersonic case, for example, a rocket nozzle, we have the same situation that V is increasing, but we generate this increase in speed by a diverging duct. You may have wondered why rocket nozzles are shaped this way rather than this way. It's because the flow is supersonic. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.